This is the start line of the Backyard Ultra here in Suffolk. We are about an hour and a half away from the start of the run. Here is the timing clock here. This is the registration tent over here with uh, race director Lindley Chambers chatting away to runners. Don't do it, I'm not turning on. Runners getting registered, a good one, maybe. getting their numbers, and Karen is giving the timing chips out. Karen's from Timing Monkey. Uh, uh, the event is sponsored by Phoenix, Phoenix Headlights. Uh, this is a university team who are carrying out some research over the weekend on nutrition. Uh, there's a food tent there. Loads of runners have got all their own food and setting up their gazebos and their tents, hoping to be here for the next 24 hours at least. And the tents stretch all the way back here. And as the weekend goes on, these tents will thin out as runners drop from the race. If you don't know what a Backyard Ultra is, we start on the hour, every hour, and each lap is 4.167 miles. And you do that lap within the hour as fast as you can so you've got some rest. And then you start again on the hour and you do as many of them as you can until you cannot do any more. And that is the Suffolk Backyard Ultra 2023, due to start at midday. The main contenders, this, uh, Mr. Milbury. The main contenders this year are um, the perennial John Stocker, who has won this event plenty of times before and was uh, until uh, last year the previous world record holder with 81 yards, 81 laps of the course. Uh, so that was the previous world record. We've got Claire Banworth as well, uh, who's running uh, for the ladies. Uh, she is. Uh, uh, the winner of uh, one of the spine races uh, last year. Uh, we've also got Oriel, uh, Oriel from uh, Spain, who about three years ago won the Monarch's Way, which is a 650 mile race. So uh, he has some pedigree as well. A uh, number of other runners who are in contention, but those are your main three to keep an eye on as uh, the race progresses over the weekend and beyond we hope okay guys so thank you very much for coming as you can see it's going to be an absolutely fantastic day and the weather is supposed to be like this at least for the next couple of days so you're going to have a pretty good run out there as far as scenery and weather is concerned most of the rest of the course is um tree lined and covered for those of you been before so you get quite a lot of shade on it so that's pretty good there's only this bit and the sandy straight bit that actually has a big long sandy section that um, is open. But other than that, it's pretty well shaded. Course is looking pretty good. I've marked it last night, so it should all be good. We've had people out this morning checking it. That should all be good. There are mile marker signs which are roughly correct. Um, but if your watch says they're 100 meters out and you come back and tell me, um, tell me from about six foot away so I can't hit you because um, I'm not really that bothered. They're just there as a reference point, guys. Okay, this is Oriel. Uh, he is uh, somebody who's won the Monarch's Way Ultra, which is 650 miles. So Oriel has something in his legs. How are you feeling, Oriel, today? I'm feeling good just for running and see what we are able to do. Have you a plan? I always have a plan, but for every loop. Okay. Not a plan of loops, because if you think on a... On, on a goal, then uh, it's very easy to to drop there. Yeah, so once you've reached your goal, you can quit there. I, it's too easy. Yeah, I will, I will not quit. Uh, the organization will quit me if I not arrive at the time at the finish line. Fantastic. Well, have a great race. Good luck, Aurel. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome uh, Silad from uh, Hungary, living in Finland. Uh, Silad, tell me the race that you recently won. Uh, the last one was in uh, Sweden, Stockholm, that was in, sometimes in May, and then before that one, 
mid April, I think, Belgium backyard. Ultra. Yeah. So you won the Belgium backyard ultra. Yes. What was the Swedish race? Uh, that was a backyard ultra race. It only lasted for 30 hours because during the night time it almost went down to sub zero. So technically, it shortened the race. Uh, it was at the beginning of May, but then you know, as you expected, daytime plus 15. I'm sorry, I'm saying it in Celsius, but nighttime zero. So wow. Actually, cold. Yeah, it's very cold. And my suitcase actually looks snow white. It was covered in frost. So <laughs> 30 hours, but I, I believe that one of the toughest races in the world. It's a bit I, different here today. Why are you in Suffolk for the Backyard Ultra here? Why, why come to Suffolk? Obviously, I would like to develop. And every time I enter a race, I arrive in the hope that I can develop, push my limits further. And I hopefully I find the right persons here. Do you have a plan today? Mm, I came healthy. I want to go home. I'm healthy. That's the only plan. Stay healthy. Yeah, you never you never know what happens. But obviously, from a racing point of view, I could throw around numbers, but I don't make that mistake usually. You know, you know what we try to target. And when I say development, that means obviously one more lap than the previous one. Yeah. So you just keep going. One more lap. That's right. One more That's lap. Right. Good luck. Thank you, Silad. No worries. So this is Claire from France. Uh, Claire, uh, tell me the race that you won recently this year in the UK. Uh, I won uh, the Spain race, the winter one. Uh, was great. <laughs> was hard, but great. And it took you what, how many hours? Take me 80, um, 98 hours. 98 hours. So does that translate to a backyard ultra of 98 loops? Uh, no, no, because in the spine you could sleep. Here you can't. You just have, yeah, you just have five to ten minutes. <laughs> for me, five. Um, so I've been asking everyone, do you have a plan for today? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't have, uh, because if you set a goal, you, you will stop at it. I have some idea. I really want to, 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 to do more than 60 hours. It's a French uh, backyard record, but you never know in the backyard. So did, you say, did, so did you say, you have, have you done near to 60 hours in it? No, that's my plan. Uh, I have done 48, uh, but uh, I stopped because I was injured. So I really think I can do more. Okay. We will see. <laughs> Amazing. Claire, thank you very much. Have Thanks. a good race. Thank you. Okay, this is uh, John Stocker. If you're a regular follower of Backyard Ultra, you will know who John is. Former world record holder at this distance, or this race, and current champion of the Thames Ring 250. John, uh, you know this race inside out. What's the plan? Uh, the plan is just take it nice and slow for the first few days. Stay, stay steady at the back of the group and uh, just keep going until there's uh, one more lap to do. Did you just say for the first few days? Yeah, we're here for a few days. We've got sunny weather, we've got loads of people. Should last a few days, shouldn't it? <laughs> uh, John, you are, you are often known for your uh, tactics. Uh, what, what tactics do you employ in a race like this? Uh, no tactics, it's literally just stay slow, stay at the back and tickle past people. And that's it. Keep going. Keep going, one lap at a time. John, good luck today. Thank you. So here we are on the start line of the Backyard Ultra in Suffolk. A lot lies ahead for these runners. Some of them are going to be out in just a few laps and some of them are going to be here in three days time. There's Karen, she's organising it. If she messes up, nobody gets a time. If I mess up. <laughs> People with ridiculously long selfie sticks and lots of friends and family supporting and crewing all with their cameras out as well. Hello guys. And here we go at the start. Away they go on their first yard, their first loop, their first lap of the Suffolk Backyard Ultra 2023. And you will often find the really experienced runners right at the back, just walking it out to start with. Because they know this is a lot. There he is, look. <laughs> Last one out. Last one out. This is a long haul. Right, this is James and uh, we're on the first loop, or at the end of the first loop of the Backyard Ultra. James, you came in in 25 minutes. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just went out a bit faster than I was hoping for. <laughs> and 
That probably will not continue more than a couple laps. Where are you from, gents? Uh, New York. New York. Okay. You're not over especially for this event, are you? Actually over, yeah, just for this. Wow. Okay. So what's the plan? Uh, just keep running until either my legs or my back gives out. I have bad knees and my spine has like three herniated discs. So. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so at some point something's going to break. So maybe not 25 minutes for every lap then. It's actually a little easier like that. There's a bit less pressure on it. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, good luck for the rest of the event. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thanks. So how many laps is that? She did. She completed five and uh, didn't get in on the sixth one. So where would you put that, Dad? I really am. Um, so proud of you. Well done, Amy. Thank you. Great job. Please take the timing thing off. Oh yes. Yeah. How'd you feel, Amy? Knackered. Are you pleased? Are you pleased with your day? Yes. I am. I didn't think I'd do this many, really, because I'm not, you know, I'm not an outdoor runner. <laughs> you are. You are, now. you are an outdoor runner. You've done. I run on the treadmill. Amy, gonna... you've done the beachy head marathon for goodness sake. You oh, are an. I know, but. Thank you very much. Be proud of yourself. Thank you. you Get us a t-shirt. Here's a t-shirt. Yeah. Well done, Amy. Good Thank job. You. Good job. Thank you. Come on, then. You're on video. Why? On video. Why are you here again? Because people are amazing and I don't know, it's one of the best events I've ever taken part. This is the third year and I'm going to sign up for next What's year. What's the most laps, uh, yards you've ever done? Uh, 12 last year. I'm okay, so? 15 this year. F you're going for 15 this yes. year. Good job. Hopefully. Good luck, Bianca. Well done. Thanks a lot to everyone. Charlie, why are you here today? Um, to run around the field. <laughs> <laughs> all day and all night, hopefully. All day and all night? Okay, so what's the plan? Um, I don't know really, maybe 75 is the first I've ever run, so that would be nice. And then 100... Not that, it was not that. 75... Kilometres. <laughs> or not even miles. So 75k would be nice. Okay. Uh, otherwise, then beyond that, 100k would be nice, and then we'll see how we go after that. Anna? Lap by lap. Well, to run my first ultra, which I'm now done. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, Good work. And then from that, yeah, 100k and then maybe 100 miles, we'll see. The nice night is long. young. The night is As young. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> Hi, Luke. Here. Yeah. So, what's the plan for today? Uh, well, C goals 37, B goals 48, and uh, A goals Biggs. <laughs> A goal is to get to Biggs. Wow, that would be awesome. Well, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the seagull. You'll take the seagull. And, okay, and um, tell me something else that you've done that you're proud of, another event that you've done that you're really proud of. Uh, I won Portland Backyard a month ago. You won the Portland Backyard a month, and how how many laps was that? That was thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Still won it. Can only beat what's there. Well done, Luke. Cheers. Thank you. So uh, this looks more like a cafe than an ultra running uh, aid station. How are you feeling, guys? Very good. Why are you here? I don't feel like <laughs> to, run, to run as far as I can. <laughs> what's the furthest you've run before? Twenty-seven laps. Okay. Last year. Nice one. So, so need to go one further this year, right? Wow. There's some good women competition this year. Yes, that's what I hear. Looks good. That's what I like. What's do. your name? Evelina. Evelina, good luck. Thank good you luck. Very much. What's the plan for you two today? Uh, <laughs> to beat their sister. So, um, my goal is 70 um, kilometers. And then if I do that, my goal is uh, 100 kilometers. Nice. And then if I do that, my goal is 24 hours. So you're just keeping going, keeping yeah. going. And my goal was to run one more lap on my brother. Nice, nice. What's your name, bud? Simon. Simon, what are you doing here today? Yeah, I'm running. What are you running for? Just a hell of it. And how far do you want to do that running for? 24 hours. That's the plan, is it? Yeah, see what happens. Do you think, if you set a goal of 24 hours, do you think uh, when you get there, it'll be too easy to stop? Or would you do one more? Don't know, ask me out tomorrow. I'll ask you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. No Good idea. luck, buddy. Cheers. All right. What's your name? Alina. Alina, uh, what are you doing in Suffolk today? Uh, backyard <laughs> ultra marathon run. And why? I just want to try, just want to experience. <laughs> Do you have a goal distance? No. Just one more lap? Yes. Okay. How are you feeling? So far, so good. Good. Well done. Thank good you. Good luck. What are you doing, Matt? 
Yeah. Skirt on. Having a sleep. Having a sleep. Did you manage to get any sleep? Well, Two minutes? Yeah, no. I mean, there wasn't any actual sleeping. Another runner rings the DNF bell. And we have 10 seconds to go to the start of loop number eight. So it's approaching seven o'clock in the evening. They've done seven laps. And there they go on their eighth lap. Here at the Suffolk Backyard Ultra 2023. There's Henrik. Hi guys, well done. Well done. Um, so why are you pulling out? I saw you were limping. I'm in pain. Oh, no, no. I'm in pain. <laughs> I haven't got it in me. Well done though. Thank Very you. Very good. Right, we've got a runner coming in with a minute and a half on the clock before the start of the next loop. Well done, well done. Um, are you turning around and going again? Yes. Good for you, good for you. Nine hours gone of the Suffolk Backyard Ultra. Head torches are now on their heads. It isn't dark yet, but in the woods, uh, it will be getting dark. Go on guys, well done. Well done Claire. <laughs> There's John. What's your name, one, two, five? Um, Eve Morrison. <laughs> Did you did you do what you came here to do? Um, yeah, yeah. I'd never run more than twenty miles before, and I ran thirty six. So fantastic! Well done. <laughs> well done. Okay, it's coming up to eleven p.m. About six minutes to eleven in the evening on the first night of the Backyard Ultra here in Suffolk. And uh, if you look around, it's very pretty because there's lots of tents that have got fairy lights going on just to make the campsite look a bit more interesting. Uh, runners have all got their head torches on, of course, now we're well into uh, darkness. But look at all these tents with their lights on. Hi, buddy. In filming Inception. <laughs> and coloured lights as well. Flashing fairy lights. Very atmospheric. So runnies are just preparing to go out now for uh, loop number 12. They've done 11 laps now. It's starting to get cold. Well, it is cold. Uh, we went from wearing shorts and t-shirts and sandals to being wrapped up in our coats. I've even got a hand warmer uh, to keep me warm. Hello. How many have we had drop out so far? Uh, we've got 108 started this lap. Yeah. So you're asking me to do maths now, Steve. <laughs> I'm asking you to do maths. No, well, 108, 108 people started the last lap. Okay, so coming up to the next one. So this will be Luke 12. About 53 have dropped out. Okay, so far. <laughs> and there's another person dropping out. Here's another person finishing their loop. They've got four minutes before they start. That was Luke. So quite a few people still come in with three minutes to go before the start of the next loop. Still a real hive of activity here. We have loads of people still around. That's the two minute bell. 
uh, obviously we've got runners, but we've also got their crew and their supporters all here as well. Lots of running clubs coming en masse to take part in this event. So they're all still here, a lot of them still going. It's approaching 9 a.m. here. So runners are about to start on their 22nd loop, 22nd yard, 22nd lap, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there are about 30 odd runners still left in and the main players are still there. So we still have the former world record holder, John Stocker, still in the game. We have previous winner, Andy Smith, still in the game. We have this year's winter spine winner, uh, which is Claire from France. She is still in the game. Uh, we've got Szilard from Hungary, uh, still in the game. Previous winner last week of uh, the backyard in Sweden and the week before that of the backyard in Belgium. So he is clocking up the backyard ultras. He is still in. Uh, we also have Anatoly uh, from Spain, who is still in the game. He is the previous winner of the Monarch's Way 630 mile race. We have a lot of serious competitors still running this race. We are three hours away from 100 miles and 24 hours. So let's see them off on their journey for uh, the next loop, which is loop 22. Looking good, guys. Looking good. You're good at lying. I've got the glasses on. At the minute, everyone looks good. They're just a fuzzy blur. It's all good. See what they came to me. Yeah, she's a good Looking good. Looking good. There they go. There's Andy Smith. So off on yard 22. So loads of people here celebrating uh, runners achieving a hundred miles on the Suffolk Backyard Ultra course. Lots of applause. You can see the popularity of the, the Backyard Ultras these days growing every year with uh, supporters coming to follow their runners. This is a big goal for a lot of people. The problem again with big goals is that once you've reached them, it's easy to stop. And the point about the Backyard Ultra, of course, is that you just keep going until you cannot possibly do any more. Mentally, setting a goal of say 100 miles can lead to you deciding that that's it and you're done. Uh, let's hope that not many of those runners today do that. And look, we've got one of those here. <laughs> Did you come here to do 100 miles? No, I just pushed myself as far as I could. Push yourself as far as you could, right. So you've got more in you, haven't you? I think I can do another one. <laughs> I think I can do another one means you can do at least one more. There we go. So from here, it is it's a mental game for lots of these runners. Uh, they just have to convince themselves that they can do it. Uh, two more DNFs at the Backyard Ultra. We are now on uh, 26 hours. And there's Spence. Uh, do you want to say about a t-shirt? Uh, no, I'm all right. Thank you. You can have a buff if you don't want a t-shirt. Oh, I'll go have a buff then. <laughs> That's right. Boo! Boo. Boo. Rubbish! Boo. Boo. He wants a buff, not a t-shirt. That's yeah. Henrik and Oriel just gone past there. There's Claire. Uh, this is Silard. Well done, Silard. <laughs> well done, Evelina. Thank you. Good job. So Evelina finishes on 28. 
I think we are down to six, 15, 15 runners now. We've had four call it quits or be timed out. And we have two ladies left in the run. What was your goal? What was your aim? Well, I didn't want to quit. <laughs> and I wanted to quit a lot. <laughs> So then it was convenient that I stubbed my toe a million times <laughs> and can't walk anymore. <laughs> so you got timed out, which is better than not going out. Better than not quitting. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. Well done. Voluntarily. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Right. Start of yard 36 now. Start of yard 36. We've still got 11 runners, but... Well done, guys. Are oh, we going to lose one? <laughs> Andrew is Andrew's only just got in. Andrew, we'll give you a beer when you come back if you go. Yeah, I'll give you a WKD. The next one. We won't allow you to have it now. So there's ten out on yard thirty-six. Three, two, one. Done. Andrew is done. Andrew Smith is out. 2019 winner of the Suffolk Backyard Ultra. We are at hour 41. So runners have done 41 loops. We're about to start 42, but we are now down to seven runners. Alex has pulled out a DNF for Alex, but that leaves seven runners left fighting it out. So Claire is still in camp. You've got Silad. Henrik is still running. John Stocker is still moving. John? Yeah. Are you feeling any better than you were earlier on? Um, on the last lap, a little bit. We'll see what this lap brings. Okay. So John's had some stomach problems um, overnight and he is improving a little. And away they go. Oriel is there as well. And out they go. So lap 42, yard 42, loop 42, whatever you'd like to call it, of the Suffolk Backyard Ultra is underway with still seven runners left in the game. It doesn't matter because it will sort of rub out. So we... What's going on, Matt? No idea. It's quite surreal at this time in the morning. Adds volume and decreases the hair. Very close, uh, Alex here, who's Chris, Chris Sperling, still running, by the way. Uh, Alex's other half uh, refused to ruffle, <laughs> to ruffle Andrew Smith's hair uh, for fear that it hasn't been washed for a number of days. Right, ruffle. Does it actually feel better, then? Does your hair feel better for yeah, having maybe. put that stuff in it? Does mine feel better now? We well, didn't look better, that's for sure. Feel better <laughs> uh, so we are 42 yards into the Suffolk Backyard Ultra. So Sealard is uh, out. We've just found him on the road here. He's not well, he's been throwing up a bit. Okay? No. Yeah, you're done. That, so so Seelard hasn't been eating for a few hours and it's now eight o'clock in the morning on Monday. That's um, okay, we'll walk you back. We are 43 back loops in. Seelard is done. He is out. So Seelard comes across the line, bowing out of the Backyard Ultra. Well done, buddy. He wanted to beat his 64 yards from earlier in the year, but he's bowed out on 43. Just nothing would sit in his stomach. Hey Claire. Hi. You okay? Ah, Dana, me Dana. Is it getting worse? Uh, what is this him? Are you enjoying the course? Oh yes. What's been your favourite backyard that you've done around the world? 
I did a backyard in Kiev and uh, it was great. Did you win? No, <laughs> I was second. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. And what have you enjoyed about this backyard? Uh, the weather. The weather? The weather? No, no, everything actually. Uh, uh, the loop is amazing. Uh, people were really uh, friendly and uh, no, it's, uh, it, it is a really great race and uh, and the the track is uh, good if you want to to do a lot of uh, loop. Yes, yes. Not not too many hills. Not yet. <laughs> uh, Claire, enjoy the rest of the run. Welcome to the start finish line of the Suffolk Backyard Ultra where we have four competitors left and they've reached a milestone. They are on 200 miles. That's 48 loops completed, 48 yards completed of the Suffolk Backyard Ultra. And we have four different nationalities represented. So we've got Henrik from Germany. We've got Oriol from Spain, Catalonia in Spain. We've got Claire from France and we've got John from the UK. So um, in order to keep the peace, uh, because we've got four different nationalities, we've, uh, we've drafted in a UN peacekeeping force who are here to make sure that everything goes to plan. Um, but they are on 200 miles and the next milestone is 50 yards. And away they go. This is the stage where they're, they're starting to help each other out because uh, we're getting to the stage now where records are in jeopardy. So uh, the, the German record, um, Lindley, what's the German record? 51 yards at the moment. So if we can get Henrik another three yards, Henrik gets the German record uh, and then other records start to tumble after that. So you can see them all together. They're helping each other out. They're going to try and get each other to those milestones. Claire, for everyone watching, how is the knee holding up? I don't know. So. It's, uh, it's complicated. Complicated? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, keep going as much as you can. Exactly. But, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I will see. <laughs> You'll see. Okay. No worries. So that's Claire, one of the four. Uh, they've got uh, two minutes or a minute and a half. One minute now. John, who had uh, stomach problems overnight, how are you feeling? Good. Do you want any chocolate? Uh, yes, I'll come back to that you, you back shortly. Back. It's your normal dietary requirement, isn't it? Yeah, of yeah. course it is. Yeah, you'll be fine. Great, right, so that's that's John just looking after my dietary needs there. Um, Henrik? Yeah. Uh, Henrik came in earlier and said nothing to report. Is that the case? Yeah, nothing to report, all good. All good. So Henrik is looking strong. So that's three of them. Where's the other one? Uh, oh, yeah, Oriol is in his tent. He's coming out now. Let me go and find him. Oriel, how are you feeling? Fine. Yeah, everything good? Yeah, everything good. A little bit tired. A little bit tired. Well, there's a surprise. You want? No, thank you. Why is everybody looking after my dietary needs? <laughs> John, get your ass out. So, off they go. Claire, Henrik, Oriel, and John is uh, taking his time. Just looking after, uh, making sure everyone's got chocolate. One. 51. 51. Enjoy yourself, We're John. halfway there. All the, well, yeah, halfway to a world record. Happy days. Happy days. 30 seconds to go to the start of lap uh, 53. So we've done two hours, uh, two hours, 52 hours of running. <laughs> Oriel. Oriel, have you broken the record? Yeah, but it was mine, the previous one. Eh? It was yours anyway, so you've broken your own Spanish record. And have you broken your German record? Um, yes, I've broken the German record, 52 laps now. 52 laps now, there they go. So Oriel and uh, Henrik have broken their records. And yeah, also Claire, if you didn't hear before, Claire has also broken her own 
French backyard female record. So we've got uh, three new record holders walking out there. Uh, we're at the start of loop 54. Uh, John, there's been a lot of love on social media for Oriel breaking the Spanish record. Yeah. For um, Claire breaking the French female record. For Henrik breaking the German record. Are you, uh, you planning on breaking the British record? I would have done, but I asked you to be my sis, Stephen, and you refused me. <laughs> Good luck, John, Thank doing you. really well. Oriel doing really well. Claire Thank still you. smashing them out. Henrik smashing them out. 54 loops. They're on their 55th now. Away they go. Right, um, Claire and John really need to get to 60. We've got uh, three hours to go. 61. 61 you need. Claire needs 60. So we're on lap or yard 58 now, 57 hours done, 58 is the next one. We need to get to midnight for Claire. She is working hard to get this. Apparently it's vitally important that I film the clock saying 57, 57, 57. There you go. So there are two minutes to go to the start of lap 60, no, lap 61, sorry. And here is Claire, who is coming in to equal the current French record set this year. Well done, Claire. Fantastic. So she's equaled the French record. Uh, who, what were the three names? Maxime, Philippe and Francois and Fabrice, sorry. Uh, set this year so she just needs to do one more lap and she has beaten the record she will be overall male and female french backyard ultra record holder um so we think she probably will go out and do one more lap <laughs> she <will>. she's nodding <laughs> she has been making us suffer because she's been coming in the past few laps with like one minute two minutes to spare um, and we're all standing waiting for her and she walks slowly up across the finish line. But as long as she gets in under the time, that's absolutely fine. So we're really pleased for uh, Claire. Considering the amount of events that Claire has done, if you haven't seen, go and look at the DUV statistic website and see all the races that Claire has done just this year. It's monumental. It really is. How many she's won as well. So congratulations, Claire. Um, well, more congratulations in one hour <laughs> when she uh, breaks the record, unless something disastrous happens. Here we go. Henrik is in on lap 61. Oh, Oriol okay. in yeah. on lap 61. And the French record belongs to Claire Banworth. Congratulations, Claire. Well done. How do you feel? How do you feel after 61? Uh, tired. <laughs> tired, yes. I want to sleep. But I am very happy. No. What, what are you going to do now? Uh, are you going to carry on? Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, one more. Uh, one more? No, no, I'm done. I'm done. Are you sure? Make yeah, the, I'm the sure. I mean, my knees are completely destroyed and I have, a, I have some rest uh, soon. So. Okay. Well, congratulations. No. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, Claire. 61 is the French record. Good morning from the Suffolk Backyard Ultra and Nettis Hall Heath Nature Reserve. 30 seconds to go before the start of yard 67 here in the Backyard Ultra. 67 and the state of play, 60, start of 67. That says 65 there, Stephen. I think the next number after 65 is 66. But they've done 66. <laughs> they've done 66. They're starting 67. We're very confused. We're very tired. Uh, but we can definitely say now, because we spent the last hour working it out, they are about to start yard 68 now. So 67 completed, 68th coming up. We have three runners still in the game as we get into our fourth day here in Suffolk. 
Uh, it's Anatoly, uh, not Anatoly, Oriol Antoli Sarau from uh, Catalonia, Spain. John Stocker and uh, Hendrik Buri, as he's now known, because he recently got married and changed his name. How uh, metrosexual is that? Uh, and here he is. Ready to go. Uh, so, lap 68. Here we go. Suffolk Backyard Ultra 2023. Three remaining. How far can they all go? This is Lindy Chambers. If you don't know, he's race director. Uh, this over here, this is Matt. If you look at the timing, Matt is responsible for the timing of this race. So is Michael Fish. And so <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, this is Sam, by the way. The beautiful park, the beautiful nature reserve that we're running in uh, is managed by Sam. She's the head warden here. So thank you, Sam, for letting us be here. Um, and that is the start finish line of the Backyard Ultra, where we have three guys remaining, three runners left. So as you might be aware by now, the Suffolk Backyard Ultra is held at the Nettis Hall Heath Nature Reserve. It's quite a small reserve, uh, just a, a few acres of land uh, run by the Suffolk Wildlife Trust, but such a beautiful place to come and visit if you want to come and have a lovely walk by the river or across the heathland, uh, wildlife to see. Uh, kids can come here and do forest schools as well. Uh, there's a little play area just over here. So we're just heading out into the woods here just to catch the runners as they come in for the end of their 71st loop. When they get here, the ground is really uneven. Uh, so if you've run 280 miles, which the guys have now, uh, this last little bit is very uneven underfoot. They really need to watch their footing as they come past here into the car park, out the other side, and then into the field where the start finish area and the camp is. So you can see the course is really well marked with this red and white uh, marker tape here and the arrows. There are just a few of these kissing gates to go through on the route. And the floor, you know, it's all forest track, so it's, uh, there's only a little bit of tarmac. Uh, there's uh, mostly just nicely hard packed, but soft forest track underfoot. A few tree root trip hazards, obviously, uh, as you're running through the forest, but uh, in general, it's good, easy running along the forest trail. And you can see that on a sunny day, Running through here is really quite shaded and pleasant. So if it's hot, you are well shaded from the sun. If it's cold, the trees again provide you with some level of cover to keep the air in and to keep a little bit of warmth. Plenty of wildlife to keep you entertained as well. There's monk jack here, which are small deer. Plenty of squirrels. Um, I haven't seen any snakes though. Right, here's Oriel and John. These guys are coming in on their 71st loop now. Safe. How are you feeling guys? Hi, good. All good? Yeah. No niggles, no problems? All good. Excellent stuff, well done guys. You're running with us. So that's John and Oriel looking perfectly fine. Uh, so Henrik is uh, just behind the other two. Uh, still looking comfortable, still running well. <laughs> keep going, keep going Henrik. 71 laps done. As I said before, Nettis Hall Heath Nature Reserve is a relatively small area. So the route is rather twisty and windy and you can take shortcuts to get to different places along the route. Not that the runners will do that, but we are gonna do that now uh, because we're gonna walk down the road, which will cut off the last bit of the route and get us back to camp a bit quicker. And this is the only significant section of tarmac that the guys cover during the route, just about 100 metres along this road before they turn left and go back into the woods there for the last 500 metres of the course. And here we go back into camp. So this is what runners see at the end of their loop. They turn the corner and run back up the final 100 yards, 100 metres to the finish line, uh, to the end of the loop. And then they've got five or 10 minutes to start and prepare for the next loop. So we saw the boys coming in at the end of lap 71. So they're about to start lap 72. There they go, lap 72. He's off and running. 
edging closer to the British record. We are approaching the British record and the Suffolk Backyard Ultra course record, which stands at 81 yards, uh, which is held by John, who is running. So he'd break his own record if he can do another eight yards. Henrik's been taped up. He's uh, He's been suffering a little bit with shin splints, we think. Um, but he's okay now. He rocked up um, looking comfortable at the end of the last loop. And away they go. Uh, Oriel, John and Henrik have now covered 300 miles. 300 miles. That's three full days of running. No sleep. Very minimal sleep. And they are still going. That is John Stocker walking out on lap 74 but he has an Achilles problem he is struggling to get moving let's hope he can make this lap and then see where we go from there but uh, we are about 12 minutes past the hour and uh, John hasn't covered a kilometre yet in the 74th loop. No, I don't. Right, so you know we were worried about John Stocker getting back in time because of his Achilles problem. Well, he's pulled it out of the bag once again and he is running and he is going to be well in time at the end of this loop. So he crosses the road with just about 300 metres. Did it ease up a little bit? It did after I started hitting Yeah, I've used, just a uh, side of the tree and just tried to press into it as much as I could. Right. To try and take as much pain away as good. Yeah. And then here we are. Okay. We're still going. Good stuff. See you at the finish. Yep. John is still moving. That's amazing. Dead on his feet. 40 minutes to go. So in, uh, in my personal opinion, I thought John was dead and buried. He has risen from the ashes on this lap. That is unbelievable. John is in with two and a half minutes to spare. Oriel right behind him. Henrik has been in for a little while. Henrik is already in his tent. But that is amazing. A minute and a half, Lindsay. Oh, a minute and a half. Is that a new insole? It's a, it's a thicker insole. Right, so a thicker insole's gone in. And um, were you going to cut a bit of the shoe or something? No. We're not no, not okay. Time to do that no. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Right, ginger biscuit, that's going to make him fly. And there's one minute before they have to be out of here. Can you see if you can open that for us? Poker face on uh, Henrik. Wow. What a screen, eh? We made that one, have you cancelled your flight? Uh, yes, we, uh, I will change them. He's, he's going to change his flights, right? Yeah. And away they go. Oriel is supposed to fly out tonight. So uh, Oriel's got to change his flights. John is the walking wounded, but he will he will get round. We know John by now. He, he will get round by hook or by crook. And away they go for lap yard 55. Uh, sorry, 75. Yard 75. So after the drama of lap 74, lap 75 looks like the end for John Stocker. 30 seconds. 30 seconds to go before the start of lap 36. Henrik is here. Oriel is here. Thank you. And John Stocker has not made it back. 
and it's a bit of a quiet mood here at the start of the lap but it's got to carry on Hendrik is out and Oriel is out and John is down and out two runners go out on lap 76 on yard 76 and we await the return of John who was suffering with a bit of an injury for the last couple of laps and will come back to a huge round of applause for his efforts over the past three days of running. So here comes Oriel. Here comes Hendrik. They're about to start. Number 78. Well done, guys. Amazing work. Fantastic. Away they go. Oh, look. <laughs> Hendrik's wearing his 25 Parkrun T-shirt. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, we're just panicking a little bit because we're on 77 hours, 58 minutes and 45 seconds, and neither of them had appeared. Hendrik has just come round the corner to complete the loop. So Hendrik crosses the line, but we now only have, we have one minute for Oriel to make it. And if Oriel doesn't make it in a minute, Hendrik is the winner on 77, 78 loops. You're going to get that number right at some point. Oh, one day we'll get the number right. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Come on, Hendrik, come on. He's going to do it. Right, so Oriel has got 35 seconds. He's 50 metres away. He's going to make it in just in time. My goodness. You make us suffer. Good grief, guys. Come on. Come on, Oriel. Come on. Get something quickly. Drink quickly. Fifth. Come on. Take it. Take it with you. Take it with you. Well done, buddy. Do brilliant. 10 seconds, guys. Come on, work hard, work hard. Come on, come on, let's do this. Let's go, let's go. Away you go, guys. Well done. Well done. Come on, Lindley. Don't know what you say to that. I don't know. It's going to be a little bit close for the next few laps, I think. Yeah, yeah, that is that is scary stuff, isn't it? <laughs> that was scary stuff. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that, that close? No, not for a while. <laughs> so we've got a little crowd of people here, <laughs> uh, some of whom took part. Uh, how many weeks ago was it that we started this run? <laughs> who, st who ran on Saturday? So we've got three, three, four people who, who started running on Saturday who've all had four, four extra sleeps and been to work yes. and looked after the kids and done whatever. And these guys are, st are still running. And they, look, they haven't even left the, the uh, field yet. Are they going to make it back in an hour from now? Yes. yes. Right, everybody says yes, yes. full of confidence. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Less chat, more running. Come on, get on with it. <laughs> Good luck, guys. We want to see you back, yeah? You've got to get back. I've got a Mexican wrap. Life is good because we are coming up to lap 80, finishing lap 80, and Henrik and Oriel are coming in together to complete the loop. Uh, but that whistle means they've only got three minutes to turn around and get back out again. Well done, guys. Well done. Oh, oil. Oil. Yeah. Oil. 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 But you've got two minutes. I'm done. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, good. 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 <laughs> Thank you. But look, that just shows how lovely Oriel is. I have to tell you, um, I went out on the trail to 
picked John up when he was in pieces two and a half miles round the trail. We were walking slowly back to camp and Oriel came up behind us on his next loop and stopped and, and gave John a massive hug and told him, you're my inspiration. And, and that, well, I'm tearing up now. That was, that was the most emotional moment of the entire four days for me. Incredible it was. And he's just done it again there. Just gone up to John. First thing he did, went up to John and said, hi, mate, you all right? <clears throat> so, Henrik is here. Um, it's too much to go all the way back to that tent now. Right by the start line, right in the corral, grabbing some food and they'll be out again. Um, so the next loop, they will equal the longest run in a backyard ultra on British soil. Now, because obviously Hendrik is German, Oriel is Catalonian from Spain. Uh, it, it won't be a British record, but it's the long, it will be the longest or equaling the longest run set by this guy here on British soil. And it will be, a, and if they do one more after that, it will be a course record. One minute, guys. One minute, and then they're off again. I'm worried. Fuck him. Get that. He didn't know where to go. Is that all right? Yeah. You're still filming the car, man. Good dog. Quick. I want to say something. All you have to do. Okay. Enjoy. Go, 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 guys. Go, go, go. Keep focused. Keep uh, focused. Yeah. Let come back. So not... Keep focused, guys. Come on. Okay, just a, just a few little worrying things there, but let's just hope that they stay, to, they, they stay focused and get this one and at least one more done. Pues mira, el tornado de perdre la memoria. Qui són els seus amics? Um, Can you call him, please? Call him. Yeah. Yeah. He was sitting on a bank. On a bench. Without knowing what he was doing here. Right, okay. Do you need us to go out? Yeah. How far away? I'll, I'll start walking At now. the top of the hill. <laughs> top of the hill, okay. But well, in the loop before, he always did the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, then put it. Oriel, well, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Let's see if he co if he comes back. Yeah, no, I'll wait till he times out. Do you think? I'll give him a call. No. Okay. It's, it's been amazing, Oriel. Amazing. You've done really well. It's good place to run. Yeah, and you've been so nice. It's been great. Great. Really good. It's uh, three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes to the top of the hour. Oriel is in he came in at 52 minutes he's in his tent he reported when he came in that he saw he saw hendrick sitting on a bench somewhere out on the course we're not entirely sure where um and this correlates with what happened in the last lap when hendrick was sitting on a bench not really sure where he was remember these guys have been running for 81 hours with little to no sleep so a sleep deprivation is having a massive effect now and Oriel suffered from it as well. We know John suffered from it earlier on in the day. He's got now two and a half minutes to find out where the heck he is, get himself back here. If not, Oriel wins the Backyard Ultra. Ironically, in 81 hours, which is exactly the same as John's course record, so he'll have equaled John's course record. Can you really? Come on! Come on! No, there's not. That's. Uh, yeah, there's not. And not be funny. He's only got what, forty-five seconds. It's going to be a half turnaround. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, did you see the one a few laps ago though? Obviously he not. No. He came in with twenty seconds. Come on! He's here. He is here. He's got thirty seconds. No, he's got a minute and a half. 
He's got a minute and a half. Come on, Henry. Okay, you've got plenty of time. You've got it, you've got it, you've got it. All right. Oh my god. Right, that is not the tightest one we've had today, but that is darn close. Hendrik is in. One minute. One minute to go. <laughs> so we're going to recommend try not to sit down on benches <laughs> just, just keep moving keep yeah just keep moving hendrick so start walking rather than sitting down are you okay <laughs> 30 seconds oh, in, in, in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 15 seconds. Get yourself out there. Enjoy. Enjoy. Eight seconds, seven, six, five, four, four, mate. Five. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Same again. Anyone got anything to say? Wow. <laughs> Can you believe that? That oh. and and that's not even the tightest turnaround we've had today, but that was just unbelievable. What's happened? Uh completely sleep deprived. I've got no uh no ability to control my body, control my feet, my anything it would just not be okay it would not be okay to be out there by yourself and uh, put other people in a situation that uh, could be avoidable so well that's probably the most sensible thing i've heard anyone say all day so <laughs> you can't be that you, your brain can't be that frazzled come fair on enough, fair enough but um no i'm happy with everything i've achieved like um it was a good couple of days but yeah brain just didn't function anymore so that's that's the way it is. It's okay. Um, it's a shame, but yeah. We are walking back to camp with somebody who's just run for 80 hours. Well done, buddy. <laughs> and Hendrix made what is probably a very sensible decision because we are going into the night and Henrik is sleep deprived. He knows he's sleep deprived. The past few laps, he's been sitting on a bench, wondering where he is, what he's doing, contemplating his life choices. And uh, that is it. So when Oriel comes back, Oriel will win the Backyard Ultra. But Henrik can be incredibly proud, incredibly proud. I mean, you've smashed your course your previous best haven't you yeah well, what was your best before uh 46 hours 46 hours you almost almost doubled it <laughs> so you've just had the race of your life yeah and uh, and you will be going to bigs in uh, tennessee yep amazing yeah. all good after the last five hours. <laughs> Don't make a noise with a bell. Yeah. Come on. Appreciate it. I think all three of you, John as well, you've, you've all suffered with sleep deprivation, but it's not surprising really, the same is position it? position Matt was in two years two ago. Two years ago, yeah. yeah. It's Fantastic. a tough board. Thanks, Thanks for the organisation. Thanks for coming along and writing Henry, you've been out. absolutely superb. I mean, you're, the way you've conducted yourself, he's almost doubled his previous best, by the way, everybody. 46 before. Yeah. 
By the way, thanks Matt, thanks Andrew for amazing crewing and Matt. Um, like without you, not possible. Like, yeah. Thanks guys. Well done guys. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. <laughs> and yeah, what I didn't forget to say earlier, but it's just obviously a really, really big one and um, more personal, but yeah, really big sh shout out to Elen, to my wife. Um, thanks so much for all the support that you've been giving me over the years um, and also over the last couple of days. I know that's uh, definitely not normal. So yeah, thanks a lot for everything. After 82 hours, Oriel breaks the course record and uh, sets the longest time ever for a backyard ultra on British soil and wins the Suffolk Backyard Ultra 2023. Congratulations! Fantastic. Thank you very much. Speech. <laughs> okay. I'm really tired. You're uh... <laughs> Thank you for everything. Excellent. Nice. <laughs> the torch. Yeah. <laughs> so for those who don't know, um, we do know Oriel quite well. Uh, Oriel entered the Monarch's Way, another of Lindley's races, which is a 615 mile non-stop race. And Oriel was the very first person to finish that race. Um, when was that? Back in 2018? 2018, yeah. Yeah, 2018, yeah. 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 So, uh, so we do know Oriel. He has pedigree. It's great to see you back with us, Oriel, and congratulations. Um, Thank you. Can you just tell us a little bit about your the four days that you've had with us, the three and a half, whatever, four days? What did you come into the race expecting and hoping? No, actually, for me, bike years are very social social races. Yes. First of all, sorry for my English. Eh? Uh, no problem. <laughs> uh they are uh very social races so what i liked the first day and the second maybe to meet people and and, and stay with them then the other days were more stay with myself and meet other uh great runners that that are here that i uh, john stoker i he inspired me to to run backyards and and today I shared some kilometers or some miles with him. So, at what point in the race were you, did you ever think about winning the race? And at what point did you think um, this is a competition now? When I had to change the my flights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I <decided. laughs> Actually, now I should be flying to Barcelona. Yes. And I changed my flights uh, to in, in just to push to my maximum. Yes. And I didn't know that it was to win. For me, it's a curiosity. It's just wanted to stay here to to test me because I know that here there are a lot of great runners, and 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 it was possible to to have a, a high performance like seventy or eighty loops. Not not only fifty because most of the the backyards that we have near home uh don't get that uh extra of of millage and i wanted to test it you wanted to test it and you cannot do 82 hours of running without in the backyard ultra without an assist is hendrik yeah. here hendrik Para. 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 Assist, yeah. <laughs> Henry. First place is nice. Thank you. Thank you. He's, he's a, a, another uh, great, inspiring runner. Uh, yeah. we, we learn together. Definitely. We'll be in Tennessee together and uh, yeah. share some more trails. Yes. So, again, for those who don't know, one of the big things about the backyard is the, the finals, the 
the championships in Tennessee, the original Backyard Ultra uh, inspired by Lazarus Lake in Lazarus Lake's back garden, backyard, which is why it's called a backyard in Tennessee. And uh, I mean, you had already qualified, actually, hadn't you, for, for oh, Big's Backyard? Yeah. Um, but both Henrik and Oriel will be going to Tennessee in October with John Stocker and Matt Blackburn to race against the Americans and other nations all around the world in uh, in the championships there. We, we expect we expect Claire to be there. Also. Yeah. And Claire, of course, yeah. from France, an amazing performance by Claire. She yeah. was here today. Yeah. She was. was. Really inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Amazing. Well Thank done, everybody. Oriel, Backyard Ultra Champion 2023. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it. We will see you all again uh, in 2024 for another crazy round of running around a loop of 4.167 miles for as long as you possibly can. No. <laughs>